In evaluating our offensive productivity and efficiency at the end of every season, it is common for us to have 80 plus percent of our scoring coming from our break, our specials, and free throws. Given that fact for us, it is my hope for you that you can find something in this DVD series to help you and your kids play to their offensive strengths. Keep the things that you're doing offensively simple. It's not about complexity, it's about execution. There's nothing that we run in our whole offensive package that would be considered complex. It's all about execution, it's all about repetition, it's all about putting your players in position to run sets that are gonna be to the strengths of your best players. Keep it simple. If you're looking to play up-tempo basketball offensively, you may want to consider a secondary break. Why run a secondary break? Well, there's a couple things you may want to consider. First off, many high school teams, as we know, transition very poorly defensively, particularly after made baskets. Uh, some of your more talented teams, teams that can really put the ball in the basket and, 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 are really do, and really do a great job of scoring the basketball, don't transition very well after they score. Second thing to consider is that if you don't put some sort of structure to what you're doing offensively with your break, your kids will walk the ball up the floor after a score. Now, if you're gonna be a running team and you're only gonna run off of defensive rebounds or turnovers, you're gonna limit what kind of a transition team that you can become. Kids need to be taught how to run. They will walk the ball up until we teach them and put them in positions and demand that they run and get in certain positions. So that organization will, I think, help you. The third thing to consider is that kids will enjoy the early uh, shot opportunities, the early scoring possibilities, and I think they'll play harder for you if they think that there's a possibility to get the ball quickly up the floor and have an opportunity to shoot it early. I think kids, when they think fast break basketball, they think early shots. When coaches think fast break basketball, they think really running the floor and getting high percentage shots. And there's just always going to be a difference between how kids and coaches see that. But I think you can sell your kids on a break and sell them on early shot opportunities and their part in running and being in certain spots. The last thing to consider is if you're going to go with any kind of secondary break, regardless of what you're running in your continuity, it must flow together. If it does not flow nicely together in a very easy to understand way, your kids will be less aggressive and you'll, they'll, there will be a, a hitch or a pause in your in your break all the time, if your point guard has to call something, if they have to back it out, if your continuity just doesn't flow in a natural way from your break. Let's go to the board and take a look at just how we set our break up um, and, and how we label players and so forth and so on. We don't number our players. You know, in the NBA, they've got their fives and their fours and threes and twos and ones, and there's just so much labeling going on. And, there's a lot of labeling going on in basketball in general. I think it limits your ability to uh, substitute and it hurts your, f your flexibility with your kids if you specialize and have too many names and numbers and, and positions for them. So for our break, we start out in teaching it with forwards, wings, and a point guard. Now we know that later on that once these kids get used to this, these, can, these positions can all be very interchangeable and there's really no problem with that whatsoever. But to start out, we've got our forwards. Our forward's responsibility, if the ball goes through the net, is to get the ball in bounds as quickly as possible. The quickest forward to the net with the ball in hand, we teach them to drive it deep out of bounds, in case there's a press, get clear of the backboard. That is your trail forward who takes it out. Okay, whoever gets there first, either forward. There's two forwards, two wings, and a point guard. The other forward then would be the lead forward, down the center of the floor, looking for a body. Our point guard's gonna get as much depth as possible on the outlet pass, getting to a side with as much depth as possible. If there's any pressure, you wanna really teach your kids the inside cuts, we want our point guard moving up the floor to receive the outlet pass. We teach our trail forward a two-hand overhead, step deep out of bounds, a two-hand overhead up the floor to the point guard, like I said, as deep as possible. Okay, wings responsibilities are simple yet really important. We wanna get our wings early, wide, 
with vision. Now, early wide is important because if you run your lane down the center or the three, what I call the three-quarter area, before you finally get wide into the front court, okay, the point guard is going to do more dribbling than we want to do. We want to do very little dribbling in our secondary break. When we're in a primary break or a steal opportunity, our guards are going to dribble. We know that. Those are primary opportunities. Those are your two-on-ones and your, and your three-on-twos and things like that. That's dribble. Our secondary break has very little dribble. We want to get the ball up the sideline then from our point guard. Either side is fine. We actually like our point guard to misdirect. If they're on the right, throw their ladder pass up the other sideline. Now, our lead forward is going to get against the body, and that's very, very important. We're not sending our lead forward right away to the block. We're not sending our lead forward right away to the first hash. We're sending our lead forward into the center of the floor trying to find a body because we'd like to go point to forward if possible. We really would. Now, once we get the ball into the front court with the wing, then we have our lead forward peel it off to the first hash no deeper. And the reason that we go first hash and no deeper is we'd like for that post player to be able to have, to have the opportunity to turn either direction and have backboard opportunity on either side. It just improves their angles and their sh shooting percentage goes up tremendously because of that. This is the basic spacing and the basic uh, motion in the way we run our break. And in the ensuing clips, we'll break down specifically each of the options and how those can be most effective. Before we get into our cuts and all of our scoring options in our secondary break, it's important to talk about ball reversal. There are three basic ways to get the ball reversed in a very safe way. You need to teach your kids the importance of ball reversal and the timing, uh, the timing importance of ball reversal. Obviously, when we get into the front court, we've got two wings. We've got one wing on the left side, one wing on the right side. We've got a lead forward who was in the center of the floor looking for a body that is now peeled off to our first hash uh, above the block. We've got our trail forward who is trailing the play out high uh, above the top of the circle. And we have our point guard who has fallen in line behind their ladder pass, whichever side they're whichever sideline their ladder pass went to. So let's just say we went up the right, right sideline right here, our point guard would fall in behind in what we call the safety position. The first read of our wing player is to go inside to our lead forward. Wing players that don't like throwing the ball inside to our lead forwards, they don't play very much. We want to get the ball inside. You may not have a dominant post player on the inside, but getting the ball inside and getting some inside touches and playing basketball from the inside out is still going to be important. So your wing players need to understand that is the first option. Now, reversal. We want to reverse through our trail forward. It's important our trail forward is active. If, it, if the wing player has taken a little bit of time evaluating the lead forward, okay, they may be relocating with their dribble and they may be ball faking and trying to get the ball inside. We don't want to discourage that because we're really, really emphasizing that. So trail forward could get stagnant. So it's important that they're driving their man off, getting open with this type of V-cut movement. Now, wing player needs to throw outside shoulder passes outside shoulder passes away from the defense. Now, when we get into the trail forward and we want to swing it and get it to the weak, weak side of the floor, it's important that our weak side wing is also not standing, but driving uh, with a V cut, driving their defensive man off so that the pass can go to the outside shoulder. Trail forward is the most common reversal in our secondary break. The second most common reversal would be through our safety, and we call it safety because it is the safest. The, mo the biggest position that is least likely to be denied by any defense would be the point guard in the safety position trailing the play out, you know, two or three feet from half court. That's, that's a pass we're going to be able to make fairly safely. If we do, if we make the safety pass, it's an automatic that our trail forward comes over, ball screens, and our point guard reverses the ball through the dribble. Weak side wing again is active and passes are on the outside shoulder. First reversal trail forward. Second reversal opportunity is through the safety. The last reversal opportunity would be a straight skip. If you have a really good low post player down here, the help side is going to be there. Teams are going to bring their entire help side over on the break and get it on your lead forward. So if they do that, a lot of times, We'll really encourage our kids through the scouting that we've done in the film that we can show that help side defenses, we want to beat those with straight skips. So we will straight skip the ball across the floor to our weak side wing player.
I'd like to show you each of the scoring options of our secondary break. But before doing so, I'd like to show one full ball reversal. I have all 11 scoring options listed here on the board, but complete ball reversal is what I'd like to demonstrate right now. I've got the sideline ladder pass to our, our wing. It's on the right side, it certainly could be the left. You really need to emphasize with your kids to not become one side dominant with your break. You want your point guard to misdirect with the dribble, you want your point guard to throw some diagonal passes to wings, dribbling on the right, throwing to the left, dribbling on the left, throwing to the right. The first read, of course, is to the inside of the, to the lead forward. If there is no lead forward passing opportunity, we can swing the ball through our point or swing the ball through our trail forward. We want to get the ball to the weak side. We also may use a skip, as we talked about in, rever in our reversal segment. Let's just say that we reverse the ball to the outside shoulder to our trail forward. The trail forward's done a nice job of getting himself open for a safe pass. The wing has also done a very nice job of getting open, and we have no problem with our reversal pass. Getting the ball reversed now to the weak side, the action is as follows. When the ball changes sides of the floor, the initial ball side wing makes a cut. When they get to the screening lead forward, they have a choice to make. They can use the screen high, or they may use the screen low. In either case, they're going to carry on through to the new ball side. It's important that the, tr that the lead forward, after setting that screen, opens for what we call a rollback. Open to the ball, open to the basket, but that lead forward has to open up and show their hands to the new ball side wing because any good defense is going to show a good post defender on that lead forward is going to step over and chip the cutter, okay? And many times that lead forward's defense is going to leave him momentarily and that's when we get these rollbacks right here. So the rollback, first option there off the cut is of course the cutter. The cutter can come off for a jump shot. The cutter can come off for a post up opportunity right here, okay? Cutter coming through, roll back to the weak side is an option, all right? Now, if none of that happens, the last option to get one full reversal through, lead forward, rolls back to the basket, no roll back opportunity. Our, our lead forward then carries right on through into an up screen, a back screen, if you will, for the trail forward. Trail forward runs his weak side cut off the screen. We've got a potential lob opportunity here off of that back screen, okay? Our point guard would then step into play, and that's when we would get into our flow from our secondary break pattern into whatever we're running from a continuity standpoint. The first clip is an action demonstration in slow motion. Our point guard's going to get the ball up to the wing. Our wing's going to evaluate our lead forward in the low post, swing it through our trail forward, and make his cut low on the baseline. Our screener is going to roll back to the basket with hands high before finally back screening for our trail forward and we are through the break. We've had a chance to take a look at our basic assignments, our basic spacing in one full ball reversal. At this time I'd like to take a look more specifically at all of our scoring options and talk a little bit more about just exactly how certain cuts should be made and how they can be most effective in getting a, a quality shot opportunity. I have 11 scoring opportunities including our, our split series at the end. The first one as we've talked about is our wing to post option. Okay, the quicker we get the ball up the sideline, the better chance we have to actually get the ball into our lead forward before help defense can set up. So our first option is ball up the sideline. Again, we're on the right side of the floor. We certainly don't want to make a habit of being only on the right side of the floor, but for consistency purposes on the board, I'm staying with the right side of the floor. We've got the ball up the sideline, and we're quickly inside. Our first option is wing to lead forward for an early shot opportunity. Clip number two of our break sequence is also in slow motion. 
our point is going to enter to our wing. Our forward, lead forward, is going to do a nice job of staying against the body and sealing for our post-entry pass right on time and a nice finish. One of the things we really try to emphasize with our kids in teaching is that our forwards work together. They work in a tandem. They work as buddies. When we get the ball inside from our ball side wing to our lead forward, it's important that these two players are accustomed to working together. The option I want to show you is what we call dive, which is very simply the ball will go inside in a timely manner to our lead forward. We've been scouted well, they're getting the help there, the team is transitioning well, and there's no scoring opportunity. We tell our lead forward to absolutely do not hold the ball, do not bog us down offensively, but make sure you look over your